This is the first revision video for Unit 3 and in it we're going to look at metals. Throughout this video on metals I'm going to be referring to reduction and oxidation reactions. So I thought it would be a good idea just to define at the outset what I mean by reduction and oxidation reactions. So in reduction reactions the reactant gains electrons. So for example, substance X, let's say it gains two electrons and turns into substance Y. Right. I'm not going to specify exactly what substance X and Y are. I want you to focus really on the electrons. This is what it looks like when a substance is gaining electrons. The electrons appear on the left hand side of the arrow. In oxidation reactions on the other hand, reactants lose electrons and in that case so you start off with the X it changes into substance Z and loses electrons this is X losing electrons so reduction the substance gains electrons oxidation the substance loses electrons so that's what I mean when I talk about oxidation and reduction reactions. Okay, metals. Right. Let's remind ourselves how metals are held together. This is the metallic lattice. It consists of this array of positively charged metal ions and delocalised electrons. Not negative ions like an ionic lattice. We've got positively charged metal ions and delocalised electrons. These electrons come from the metal atom. So say it was sodium with an electron arrangement of 281. So all the atoms lose the outer electron to become 28, producing the sodium ion. And these are the electrons that they have lost. Now these electrons are delocalized, which means they can move throughout the structure when metal, when solid or liquid. So they can carry charge giving metals a distinctive property of being able to conduct electricity when solid. Right, let's focus on the chemical reactions of metals. Well, the main chemical reactions of metals you should be aware of. Firstly, they will react with oxygen to form metal oxide. They will react with water to produce a metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. And some of them will react with acids to produce a salt and hydrogen gas again. So it's interesting to note that they also can neutralize acids. Now in all these reactions, the metal is being oxidized. The metal is losing electrons. So let's look at say magnesium reacting with oxygen. produce magnesium oxide. Okay. So if we just focus on what's happened to the magnesium, okay. it's gone from a magnesium atom, whereas over here we've got a magnesium 2 plus ion. So it has lost two electrons, so it's being oxidized. And in all these reactions the metal is being oxidized. Not all metals react at the same speed. Some metals are very reactive and undergo these reactions very fast, whereas other ones are far less reactive. We know which ones are which from the electrochemical series. So at the top here, we've got our very reactive metals. Lithium, potassium, calcium, sodium, magnesium. Whereas at the bottom, We've got far more unreactive metals, silver, mercury, gold. So by looking at the electrochemical series, we can see if the metal is going to undergo those chemical reactions quickly or slowly. In the case of acids, however, there's a quite defined line separating the metals that will react with acids and the metals that don't. And that line is hydrogen. The metals above hydrogen electrochemical series 
will react with acids. The ones below won't react with acids. So look at that trick question. You're right. Copper carbonate, copper oxide, copper hydroxide will all neutralise acids, but copper metal won't because it's below hydrogen in the electrochemical series. Next we move on to how do we get our hands on these metals? Because most of these metals don't actually exist uh, uncombined in nature. Most of them have formed compounds which we call metal ores and we have to extract the metal from the metal ore. The only exception to that is these very unreactive metals, the silver, mercury, gold, which can often be found uncombined in nature. But if they are found as, a, as an ore, it's very easy to extract the metal from the ore and it can be done by just using heat alone. So just say for example, heat up a sample of silver oxide and will decompose to give you silver and oxygen. As you go up the electrochemical series, it gets harder to extract the metal from its ore. So once you get to copper, heating it alone is not enough to extract the copper from the ore and we have to heat it with carbon or carbon monoxide. You may remember in S3 extracting copper from copper oxide by heating it with carbon powder. That works up to zinc but from aluminium upwards even that is not enough to extract the metal from the ore. And for the most reactive metals, we have to use electrolysis. And I want to just take a little more detailed look at electrolysis. Okay, so let's talk about electrolysis in the, the example of calcium chloride. Okay, so we've got a solution of calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is soluble in water. So we've got calcium ions and chloride ions floating around in the water. We say the calcium ions are blue and the chloride ions are the red dots. So they're all floating around the solution. We put in two electrodes. Normally we'd use graphite electrodes. Doesn't look like it in this case, but uh, let's imagine these are graphite electrodes. Use a DC power supply DC means direct current, which means one electrode, this one in this case, stays negative all the time and this electrode stays positive all the time. And that ensures that we only collect one product at each electrode. So when we turn on the power, the negative electrode is going to attract all the positive ions, which are the blue calcium ions, and the positive electrode will attract the negative ions, the red chloride ions. So, see, all the positive metal ions go to the negative electrode. All the chloride ions go to the positive electrode. And once they get there, the chloride ions lose electrons, turn to chlorine gas. So, electrons on the right hand side, that's an oxidation reaction. But more interestingly, we're looking at the extraction of metals from the ores. What happens at the negative electrode is that the calcium ions gain electrons to turn into the calcium metal, which is what we want. It's gaining electrons, so that's a reduction reaction. And indeed, all the extraction of metals from the ores are reduction reactions. Okay, another interesting thing we can do with metals is make electricity. And to make electricity, we need to link together two different metals. So the simplest cell will just look like this. Two strips of different metals, okay, connected up here to a voltmeter. And we have them sitting in an electrolyte. An electrolyte is needed to complete the circuit. And the electrolyte will be something that conducts electricity. 
uh, a solution that conducts electricity so normally it's just uh, an ionic compound dissolved in water like sodium chloride solution and what happens is the electrons flow from the metal higher in the electrochemical series to the metal lower in the electrochemical series and it flows through the wires the electrons can't flow through the electrolyte so if you have magnesium and copper the electrons will flow from magnesium to copper if you've got iron and silver the electrons will flow from iron to silver and the further apart the metals are in the electrochemical series the bigger the voltage will be so you've got tin and lead electrons will flow from the tin to the lead but you'll get quite a small voltage whereas say uh, aluminium and silver would give you a bigger voltage because they're further apart in the electrochemical series more complex cells uh, look like this where we have a metal sitting in a solution of its own ions and then another metal also sitting in a solution of its own ions and we have a salt bridge or an ion bridge uh, to complete the circuit so again what happens is the metals the, the electrons flow from the higher metal in the electrochemical series to the lower metal zinc is higher than copper so the zinc will lose electrons and the copper will gain electrons so here we see the zinc metal losing electrons losing two electrons and they will flow to the copper through the wire not through the salt or iron bridge ions go through the iron bridge so the electrons go to the copper where they are picked up by the copper ions producing copper metal so in the higher metal we get oxidation and the lower metal we're getting a reduction reaction now how do you know that the zinc loses two electrons uh, you either be given the ion electron equation in the question or you choose it from the ones given in the electrochemical series see over here you've all the ion electron equations you'd be expected to use they're all written as reduction reactions so the electrons are all on the left hand side so if you're looking for a reduction reaction you'll just copy exactly what's on this page okay so in the previous example it was Cu2 plus plus two electrons going to copper that was a reduction reaction but the higher metal the zinc the oxidation reaction you can't just copy what's here because this is written as a reduction reaction you have to swap it you have to take what's on the right hand side and put it on the left hand side and vice versa so it becomes Zn going to Zn2 plus plus two electrons in reality you don't get reduction reactions happening without oxidation reactions I always like to think if something's going to lose electrons you need something to pick up those electrons so the overall reaction involving both the oxidation and the reduction is known as a redox reaction and you'd be expected to be able to write balanced chemical equations for redox reactions so if you're given an oxidation reaction and a reduction reaction what you have to do to produce a balanced chemical equation is to make sure that the number of electrons being lost is the same as the number of electrons that are being gained so here we've got two electrons being lost but only one being gained now we can't just put a two in front of here to balance it because a silver ion can only gain one electron so what we have to do is multiply the bottom reaction by two multiply everything so we've got two silver ions picking up two electrons to produce two silver atoms so when you add them together you collect all the terms on the left hand side of the arrow 
and collect all the terms on the right hand side of the arrow you can cancel out the electrons because there's two in each side leaving you your balanced redox equation of Zn plus 2Ag plus going to Zn2 plus plus 2Ag so notice no electrons appear in the balanced redox equation they appear in the electron equation for the oxidation and reduction but they've got to cancel out ok five, five things you must be able to do firstly you be able to recognise metallic bonding and use it to explain why elements conduct electricity you should be able to predict the speed of reaction and the products formed when metals react with oxygen, water or an acid you should be able to describe the most suitable method for extracting metals from their ores you should be able to explain how electrochemical cells work and you should be able to recognise oxidation and reduction reactions and use these to construct balanced redox equations